This video is sponsored by Train World, America's discount model train store since 1968. Hey everybody, it's Jimmy from the DIY and Digital, and today we are designing and printing this little freight depot. Welcome back everybody. First of all, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss any updates like this video. This video is brought to you by Train World. You can check them out online at trainworld.com. They're America's discount model train store since 1968. They're doing a lot of cool things right now, including a lot of virtual train shows with some of the big manufacturers. So you definitely want to check them out. Okay, so let's get to what we are doing today. So I did another poll for the next three buildings I'm gonna design on the YouTube channel. And the number one of those three was a freight depot. And I decided to go a little different. I decided to go for something more in the 1930s to 50s, maybe a little earlier, maybe a little later era. I know I've done a lot of modern buildings um, typically, but I wanted to design something that is actually in more of the golden age of railroading. So here it is. Let's go ahead and hop into Tinkercad and get this thing designed. I start as usual researching Google images to get the base of what I want. I then make sure I have the proper dimensions for my print base just as a double check. I then grab a cube and make it the basic size of the building with a little math along the way for accuracy. Now this is the first building I've had with a pitched roof. So I'm going to use the roof shape in Tinkercad and I'll adjust it to match the size and then I hollow the whole model once I've mated those two pieces. Next, I form the base of the platform. Now I want a wood platform for this so I make and replicate a bunch of little planks and put them all the way across. I then bring in my brick texture, which is something you have seen me use in a lot of models in the past. And I begin to carve out the bricks. Next up, I use a cube and a half cylinder to make the large doors for the platform. I turn them into hollow spaces and cut out the doors. I then hollow out the entire base. Now I make those classic roof supports that you see on so many railroad stations from that time period. I hollow out a wedge shape to make these. Once I've got the first one made, I copy and paste a bunch of them making sure that they are equally spaced. Once I have an amount that looks correct, I go ahead and align them to the first one and merge them all. I then duplicate that and push it to the other side and flip it around and attach it to the other side. Now it's time for the roof itself. I use another roof shape to start forming the actual roof. And once I've found the angle, I modify a series of cubes to make the pitched roof. I use a few cylinders to round out the edges as well as the peak. Next, I cut out a freight door for the other side so that deliveries can bring stuff in, such as backing in a truck or anything like that. I also cut out some windows and a regular size door. Now it's time to create a loading ramp for the side where things will be brought to the station to be placed on the train. I bring the print guide back in to make sure I don't go over the size of the print bed. Now I go ahead and make the freight doors. I also add a bar to the windows just for a little bit of looks. I then go to make another loading ramp for the platform where stuff is being loaded and unloaded from trains. Now all it's left to do is trim the bottom to make everything even. And I can go ahead and export it and prep it for print. I use G2 box for the main building prep and I use my printer's proprietary slicer for the roof, which is flash print. And now I can pop it in the printer. 
All right guys, so we've gone through the print process and the cleanup process and here it is. The uh, freight depot turned out extremely well. This is the first print. This is not like some second or third print that I got and perfected. This is the first print, first print and roof. And you can see, I did put a little primer on the roof, but it turned out extremely well. So well that I'm gonna go ahead and actually print a few more of these and put them on my Etsy store on a limited run. So they're gonna be $12. Um, they just turned out so well. The, the roof supports turned out well, the doors, the brick. Uh, the loading platform, you can see the uh, wood texture on it really, really well. Um, so $12 on my Etsy store. I know you guys have been begging for industry, so this is my first uh, industry on the Etsy store, so there you go. Uh, speaking of industries, um, I decided to put up not one but two today in InScale, so I'm also doing a small fuel dealer, which you've actually seen me design some of the parts for in a previous video. It's a variation of the one that's on my layout right over here. So that's gonna be on sale for $12 as well in my Etsy store, so you can go ahead and check that out in the link in below. And I also want to give a shout out to my patrons. They are listed right here. If you would like to become a patron on my Patreon, there's a link in the description below. Right now, they are voting and deciding on names for my building. So right now, they're working on building number one, which is going to be something that they name. So if you want to be a part of naming my buildings, you can go ahead and join my Patreon page. And that starts at just $1 a month. Okay, guys, so that's it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Special thanks to our sponsor, Train World. Those guys are awesome. Check them out at trainworld.com. And as always, I'm Jimmy from the DIY and Digital. Stay safe and happy railroading. Go ahead and hop into Tinkercad and get this thing designed. <coughs> wow, I held that sneeze in. <laughs> it is not sweltering hot in here which is awesome of course it's 6 30 in the morning and i'm finishing up and you have to get up at 5 a.m to do this but it's not burning hot in here <laughs> <laughs>